the role played by Marconi Company Wireless in maritime rescues raised public awareness of the value of radio and brought fame to Marconi, particularly the sinking of RMS Titanic on April 15, 1912, and RMS Lusitania on May 7, 1915. RMS Titanic radio operators Jack Phillips and Harold Bride were not employed by the White Star Line, but by the Marconi International Marine Communication Company. After the sinking of the ocean liner, survivors were rescued by the RMS Carpathia of the Cunard Line. Carpathia took a total of 17 minutes to both receive and decode the SOS signal sent by the Titanic. There was a distance of 58 miles between the two ships. When Carpathia docked in New York, Marconi went aboard with a reporter from the New York Times to talk with Bride, the surviving operator. After this incident, Marconi gained popularity and became more recognized for his contributions to the field of radio and wireless technology. On June 18, 1912, Marconi gave evidence to the Court of Inquiry into the loss of Titanic regarding the marine telegraphy's functions and the procedures for emergencies at sea. Britain's Postmaster General summed up, referring to the Titanic disaster, those who have been saved have been saved through one man, Mr. Marconi, and his marvelous invention. Marconi was offered free passage on Titanic before she sank, but had taken Lusitania three days earlier. As his daughter Degna later explained, he had paperwork to do and preferred the public stenographer aboard that vessel. Over the years, the Marconi companies gained a reputation for being technically conservative in particular by continuing to use inefficient spark transmitter technology, which could be used only for radio telegraph operations, long after it was apparent that the future of radio communication lay with continuous wave transmissions, which were more efficient and could be used for audio transmissions. Somewhat belatedly, the company did begin significant work with continuous wave equipment beginning in 1915, after the introduction of the oscillating vacuum tube valve. The new streetworks factory in Kelmsford was the location for the first entertainment radio broadcasts in the United Kingdom in 1920, employing a vacuum tube transmitter and featuring Dame Nellie Melba. In 1922, regular entertainment broadcasts commenced from the Marconi Research Center at Great Bado, forming the prelude to the BBC and he spoke of the close association of aviation and wireless telephony in that same year at a private gathering with Florence Tyzak Parbury, and even spoke of interplanetary wireless communication. In 1924, the Marconi Company co-established the Union Radiofonica Italiana, now RAI.